now, the Duchess of Sussex, <laughs> Meghan Markle. <laughs> So far, well, I think I've gone mad today. Smart speaker. So I've gone really funny this Friday. I don't know what's going on. Right, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, has launched a new lifestyle band entitled, wait for it, American Riviera Orchard. What does that mean? It's very Montecito. <laughs> Her Indeed. new venture, conveniently timed with the Princess Diana Memorial Awards, will see her flogging homeware and jam. Can't wait. Great. Meghan's blatant attempt to upstage Prince William capped a miserable week for the royal family. Let's uh, bring in former BBC royal correspondent, one of our favourite men hey. in the whole world, oh, well. Michael Cole. Welcome, Michael. Uh, now, uh, last night was the Diana Legacy Awards at the Science Museum. Uh, much has been said about the continuing sibling feud between William and Harry. Uh, they can't even stand to be in the same room, even if one of them is being beamed in by video. Uh, William made a speech and then much later, uh, Harry was beamed in from Montecito. So that uh, rivalry, that feud continues apace. Uh, but the timing of the launch of, wait a minute, American Riviera Orchard, <laughs> Uh, where uh, Megan seems to have restyled herself as some kind of chef. You can buy all of her products, as we just said, like jam, and you can buy her special cutlery, which, as I said this morning, uh, brings a whole new meaning to the term knife crime. Uh, uh, the timing of that announcement was, I think, crass and awful. She deliberately tried to overshadow an award ceremony devoted to the cherished memory of Lady Di, Princess Diana. I mean, she, I think she's gone too far this time. What do you think, uh, Michael? Good afternoon, Alex. Good, good afternoon, Kevin. Um, someone purporting to speak for Meghan said she has a freakish attention to detail. So was this a calculated upstaging of her brother-in-law's speech last night? That same uh, person uh, said that she doesn't make mistakes, so we shall draw our own conclusions whether this was a calculated move in order to give a big boost to this new podcast of hers. It's worth saying that when the late Queen was on the throne, any member of the royal family who endeavoured to exploit their royal status for monetary gain was frowned upon very much. Uh, Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, had to give up her PR firm. And when uh, Princess Anne's son, Peter Phillips, uh, started advertising milk on Chinese television, uh, he was censured for that. And of course, what happened when uh, Meghan became engaged to Prince Harry in 2017, she gave up her previous podcast, uh, the, the Stig, because it was a money-making enterprise. This is more or less its relaunch. Yeah. And she's not relaunching it as Meghan Markle, former actress. She's relaunching it as Meghan Markle, Duchess of Sussex. That is the call bird, as they say in the trade. That's the thing to get the punters through the door and spending their money. This is essentially home shopping uh, with a royal coronet on. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It really uh, well put, ticked me well off put. this morning when I saw that little advert and I thought, how dare you turn around and use that title? You don't come over here and cut ribbons. You don't stand in the drizzle and shake hands with people. How dare you use that to flog genital candles and do a cooking show? <laughs> Everyone's doing that these days. Do you know what I mean? I just can't imagine it's going to be particularly successful. Uh, what do you think the palace have made of it? Do you think they're actually minded to intervene and turn around and say, sorry, love, you can't do that? Actually, Alex, somebody very close to me, my wife, said, well, more or less what you've just said. She doesn't do anything for this country. She doesn't do anything to promote the royal family. In fact, she does the exact reverse. But I must just tell you, I have uh, certain correspondents around the world. One from uh, Holland wrote to me. She'd seen it and she said, uh, Megan in the kitchen, she looked like the Swedish chef in the Muppets. Now, I'm not familiar with that, but maybe other people know uh, whether whether the, the Swedish chef in the Muppets looked like this wonderful person here with the lovely roses. Uh, there we are, gently stirring whatever it is she's stirring. Uh, interestingly, the title, American Riviera, uh, comes from uh, the county of Santa Barbara, which is where Monticito, their hilltop Camelot, is located. And it's a, a rather lovely coastline 
uh, and it's called uh, the um, the Riviera. And they're selling products, or she is going to sell products from around there. But it was interesting when she lived in London briefly uh, at Kensington Palace in uh, Nottingham Cottage. She used to trot out the South Gate of, of the palace and go diagonally across the road. There was a very big sort of uh, Californian food market there, and she spent many happy minutes in there. Uh, reliving uh, the, uh, the the culinary delights of, of America. And we all know about the culinary delights of America. If you go there, one thing about America I think is wonderful, you never see any fat people. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. So healthy. Listen, Michael, you know, these two feuding brothers, the one thing that still unites them is a devotion to the memory of their beloved mother, Princess Diana. So that's it's a very... A uh, thin sinew of connection uh, that I contend well, Meghan trampled yeah. all over by trying to overshadow that event that, in a very, very small way, brought William and Harry together. But she, every time she sees publicity about someone else, she gets jealous and she's got to get publicity for herself. But to, to use the Diana Legacy Awards uh, as a kind of springboard for her tacky little website, I think this was the moment. She really went too far. Kevin, I, I find it very difficult to disagree with the word you've said because uh, Diana loved those boys. She absolutely loved them. Uh, not long before she died, when Prince William was really growing up, I said to her, you've really bred some height into the royal family. And she looked at me and she said, and good looks, Michael, and good looks. Yes. And she thought uh, and made them swear that they would always be for each, there for each other. Never let anybody get in between them. And you have to remember, after the now Prince and Princess of Wales married in 2011, uh, Prince Harry virtually lived in their apartments at, at Kensington Palace. He was, he, he and Kate were firm friends. I think Prince William even got a little bit jealous about it. And that, of course, was all pre-Meghan Markle. It's all gone sad after that. We, who we never see now is the person we used to call the happy prince, the man joking on the uh, running pitch, running track with Usain Bolt, the person who always had a smile, the person who was uh, in his mother's eyes. I mean, Diana thought that Harry would make a good king. She called him good king Harry. I think Prince William is, has absolutely the makings of a brilliant future king. It, and it's tragic to see these brothers at loggerheads, at daggers drawn, it, actually. But it's going to be a long, long time before Prince William uh, forgives his brother, not for the insults that he's endured. I mean, most men can endure insults. And goodness knows I've been in, um, insulted by experts. But what they don't like is their wife or their driving being criticised Absolutely. unfairly. Absolutely. And that has certainly happened here. Uh, and it's a very, very bad state of affairs. And to be quite frank with you, I can't see how it will ever be resolved. Mm. I, don't, I don't think well. those two will ever think, uh, talk again. Uh, and uh, thanks for uh, talking to us, as always, Michael, at the end of what, even yeah. by royal standards, has been a ridiculously turbulent well, week. Thanks again, know. Michael. Always a pleasure. Maybe a hamper of Riviera Orchard is on its way uh, to Kate as we speak. Uh,